In this self-care tutorial, we're going to be covering the modeling of the turning torso in Melma, Sweden. It's the tallest tower in Melma. The architect is Kalatrava, and what's really unique about this tower is the fact that it actually twists as it goes up. And through this modeling, we're going to be exploring the former tools such as skew, bend, twist, inflate. So let's open up self-care, start a new project, and we're going to name this Melma Turning Torso modeling so as usual we're going to first start by referencing an image this image is going to be the plan which i have downloaded online so it automatically positions in the, in the middle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it slightly bigger again you don't have to be too concerned with this because you, you can actually resize it and rescale it. But the most important thing is for you to position it right in the middle there. And if we can turn on symmetry with Z turned on, this allows us to actually instantly mirror whatever we are drawing on the other side of the axis. So the first thing we're going to do is draw it to match up with the points that are is shown on the drawing and so you can see the white portion that is shown on the plan are actually the structural columns within the tower and the darker lines are actually the windows so by actually matching it up we can then take our next step by extruding the windows it would just make the modeling process that much easier and we wouldn't actually have to boolean those holes for windows and that's the last portion of the tower and then we're going to close it just by dragging it to the end and you'll see a yellow dot and as you can see self cat actually does an auto save which is great especially when you're working in a for a project that has a deadline and you don't want to lose anything as you can see what i did was i just filled the polygon so it becomes becomes a surface which would take us to our next step of actually extruding it in the y-axis but before we do that let's reference an image of the elevation so that we have something to work with in terms of height and actually get a better understanding of how the building is is composed so we're first gonna the idea is that I want to scale it to match up with the same width as my plan and for that, we're going to use this left side of the image. We're going to put it so we match it up. Again, just bear in mind that SelfCAD is an incredibly flexible tool. And you can constantly be making changes as you wish. You, as you'll see later in the tutorial, when I start to use the form to readjust the shape and forms, and you know you can use undo you can also make save as of the document and actually go back to a later stage so we've um, accepted where the reference image is we've closed that and next thing we're going to do is we're going to then start extruding this plan and uh, as i've said before in previous tutorials you can first extrude it at whatever height you need to and then you can then rescale it up to match it against the elevation that we have in the background. Something to use is actually magnet within the move tool. This allows you to move and snap an object onto another. And for this one, we're gonna have to rescale it because it's slightly thinner. As I mentioned countless times, scale is so useful. It allows you to make these changes on the go. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to then start to select these windows and prepare it for our next stage of actually creating window frames and also extracting the glass within them and which will be useful later that we can start to apply a transparency material to it so that the building reads much better you've got windows you've got solid panels 
So I chose the wrong tool of extrusion, but that's fine. We'll just go back. And now we've got inset at one, which we just have to remember, we're gonna use the same for everywhere. And now we're gonna use fill polygon to close up that geometry. And by selecting all these windows again, we are going to extract these um, planes so that we can apply a material to it. So you just have to go to Utilities, Split. And we're going to drop that opacity to about 40. So we're going to be trying a slightly different tool for this side of the wall by using Add Details within the Modify tool. And I've drawn it just so that it takes advantage of the midpoint snap. And the reason why I'm doing this slightly differently is just to show you a slightly different way of modeling because maybe while drawing in plan you keep it really simple but you've decided that you want to add more details so this is what you can do while actually maintaining a certain amount of accuracy and symmetry within the the design itself so i'm going to do the same for this portion oh just snapping it from the middle to the middle and that's why and that's why i've mentioned it in previous tutorials before that self-cat allows you this flexibility and it really it really does feel like a very creative tool that sort of bridges technicality with an artistic flair because it allows you to do things in a slightly more sculptural way and if you make any mistakes as i've shown as you've seen just now all you have to do is just hit command z or control z to take you back to the next, to the previous step. Okay, so that's it for drawing the windows on this side of the building. And we're gonna hit the tick button to close that. The next thing we're gonna do is same exercise of actually selecting these phases and creating frames. So this portion we just create an inset and make sure that individual is turned on so it creates the frame individually of each plane and we don't have to extrude that inwards because and we don't have to extract it, so extract it either because there are not going to be any windows on that side but for the bigger ones those are windows we're going to do the same thing we're going to inset it with individual turned on we're going to tick to close that and we're going to use extrusion as well and we're going to extrude it by minus one to push it inwards. And similarly, going to utilities to, and hit split. That allows us to extract the glass out of it and actually drop it to an opacity of 40. And with magnet turned on in the advanced tools, we're going to copy it up while matching with the elevation at the back. And just for the sake of organization, I'm going to pick all the glass and I'm going to go to edit group. This is something that I like to do just to keep the workspace neat and tidy and you can always ungroup them. And I'm going to hide this plan outline because I don't need it at this moment, but it will come in useful again later as you'll see. And I'm going to then take the main building and the windows and drag it to match up with the elevation. And we're going to start to look at copy offset tool to create copies of it across the, there are eight of them and they position 200 apart. So as you saw, what happened just now is because our workspace is too small, that it eventually pushed everything on the other side of it, but we want it to be copy offset in one direction only so let's just move the reference image and move our building to match up with it and we're going to use the same tool copy offsets at a distance of 200 on the exact axis with copies of eight and that works that actually sits out accurately so you you can have a go at trying to figure out the spacing i figured out that mine was 200 as i said before you can always undo it just test it out and see what happens the next thing we're going to do is going to select everything and we're going to rotate it to 90 degrees on the x-axis and you'll see that it automatically pushes everything up above the reference plane. 
which is incredibly useful because you don't want your building to be halfway in the middle of the reference plane. And now we're going to move it upwards so that you create a lobby space at the bottom of the building. And now I've done the same thing where I've selected everything and I'm grouping it. But then I realize, hey, you know what? Actually, I still want to work in isolation with some of the groups, with some of the objects. So what you can do is you can just ungroup it and regroup it accordingly. So as you can see, I've regrouped the solid part of the building as one group whilst the windows in each section are still individual. So what, what I'm doing right now, as you can see, is I'm picking the edges of, of the building, which I'm going to then go to Tools and Loft it. This one actually breaks the building into different sections. It creates this lobby space within every four to five floors. Architects do this a lot actually, when they start to break, break the buildings up into different sections. It actually helps to not only create some proportion at different scales, but it also creates a really nice building in terms of views. So what I'm gonna do is I've mirrored it on the front axis so we actually save the trouble of actually lofting on the other side and it actually creates good amount of accuracy. So again, with move tool with magnet turned on, I can match that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two because there's no need for them to be separate entities and pick those edges and loft them. So that closes up the, the gap in between the two surfaces, the two lofted surfaces. And the next stage is actually to create some walls on the inside so it doesn't feel like these separate sections are floating. And for that, I'm going to reuse that outline of the planet that I made hidden shortly a while ago. I told you it's going to come in useful again. And I'm just going to rescale it on the center to become a little bit smaller. And I filled the polygon and now I'm going to be extruding it. You see, if you go minus one, you don't see anything. So make sure you have a positive value on that, push it up. And now let's go to elevation view and actually put it in the right place. Very roughly there, push it inwards. And once it's more or less in the right place, I'm going to want to go to the plan view and turn on wireframe. And I'm just going to eyeball it to make sure that it sits right in the middle. We want it to read like an, like an offset from the outer perimeter inwards. And now going back to elevation view, I'm just going to scale it so it matches up with the top. There you go. And I'm going to close that. And the same thing. We are going to have to create some windows on this side. So I'm just going to select that. And because of the height of these panels, it will still read as a separate kind of language to the rest of the building. As you can see, the window panels are a lot taller. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to extrude it inwards after insetting. Always make sure that vertex normal is turned on. And I'm going to split that and turn it into glass with an opacity of 40%. I'm going to group those items so that I can then copy them upwards much easily. Again, copy offsets. And we remember the number we used was about 200, I believe. And with a copy of 7, but I think that should be on the Y axis instead, not the Z axis. And now that we've got all those groups, we're going to group those those separating smaller portions are going to be all grouped into one. You can see that I spend a lot of time doing groups and ungrouping. You can call me a little bit OCD, but it really does help to have a tidy workspace. And now I'm going to be grouping all the windows into, into one again. I hope you're getting as excited as I am that the building is slowly really coming together. You've got a tower now. Obviously, the most prominent feature of this tower, which is the turning part, hasn't happened yet, the twisting. 
but that's going to happen really soon. Let's start by creating the next thing, which is the, the top hat, the cylindrical top hat, which houses the lift. And for that, we again, we're going to just eyeball it. We're creating a visual of this building. And um, for quick modeling, don't get too carried away by the details. Obviously, if you wanted to, feel free to spend more time in making sure that that you get all the measurements accurate and self-cat has the tools to allow you to do so and we've just positioned that central lift column which also pokes out on the top of the building as a cylindrical hat right in the middle so up to now our building has been sort of floating we're going to create an entrance lobby so i've just copied down one of our sections and we're just going to delete this glass portion of it because we just don't need it and we're just going to now then rescale it so it meets the underside of the first portion right above the entrance lobby okay and next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to create an inset and we're just going to imagine that the bottom lobby lobby is predominantly a lot of glass you know very welcoming super open again i'm just making assumptions but if you had the time we're just trying to keep this tutorial as quick as and simple as possible but if you have the time try and figure out which ones are glass which ones are solid panels and if you wanted to you could actually add more detail into it there you go we're going to split it and again, give it an opacity of 40%, exactly the same as all the other glass that we've been using in this project. And there you go, you've got your tower. So again, a little bit of organization, grouping things in the right manner. So it just keeps the space really clean. And there you go, you've got group 10 as your entire building. And the next thing I'm going to be doing is actually starting to consider the structural trusses on the, on the sharp end of the building. And for that, I'm going to be using a cube. And, and I've split it into eight sections, exactly the same as our tower. And we're going to be adding details because these trusses actually have triangulations. And... Um, we're going to be using add details to draw these edges. So we hover on top of the vertex and you'll see it turn on yellow and then, then you know it's snapped to it. I'm just going to work my way up. Pick the vertex. Bring it to the other end. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, but just just hover over it and eventually you'll find that little point. So for this part of the modeling process, I would highly recommend that you've got some, a few reference images to, to understand how the structural elements are put together, um, how are they connected, how are the nodes like. For this, I've been referring to these images that I just found on Google, and that's all you need really. So one more last edge, and there you have it. Obviously, I haven't twisted this, and that will happen next. We will be twisting this, which actually is at a 90 degree. 90 degree on the y-axis, and we've also twisted it for our building, group 10. Next thing I want to do is actually start to drag our structural model I call this a structural model is because what we'll do is we will extract the lines later to draw the structural trusses. So I'm just going to rotate it in place and drag it closer. Match it up more or less. I'm just going to rescale it as well. Spend a bit of time here. Again, th this might be the second time I've mentioned this in this video. 
The self cat is incredibly flexible. I really see it as a tool in between precise technical architectural modeling and with a with a hint of sculptural flexibility. So you can see I'm spending a time a bit of time just trying to align it with the building. It'll take a while. As you can see, I'm moving between move scale just just to get it more or less in the right position we're almost there we're going to be working with the bottom the bottom section let's try and align it first and once we have we have it aligned in the right position at the bottom we can then start to skew it so by default the skew tool is at the bottom and what it does is it shifts the top so as you can see what it's starting to do is it's starting to match up but now we're going to use the top then to skew the bottom okay and we're going to try the middle match it up a little bit more it takes a bit of time as i say but once you get it right you know it's right. We just try to inflate just to push it out a little bit more. Inflate just sort of fattens up the middle portion of it. You can go to bottom as well just to inflate it. Very, very flexible tools that we're working with. going to go back to taper and taper if the taper tool is on the top if the gizmo is on the top it actually tapers the bottom and I think I'm quite happy with what we've um, adjusted it to so as I mentioned we're going to be extracting these lines and then we're going to be putting the structure on it so that's going to be done by Selecting all these diagonal lines and then hitting move, the move tool. And all you have to do is hold control down and move it downwards just by a little and then just put, put it back to the same position that it was at. And that was 83 for me. So I'm going to be creating a cylinder that will be stretched with the follow path tool onto these diagonal trusses so first thing is um, I'm going to want to taper it on the ends so I've used, used marquee selection to select the faces and I've rescaled it rescale it in uniform by holding the middle gizmo downwards I'm going to accept that and I'm going to scale it up in the y-axis just to make it a little bit longer and hit follow path we're going to wrap it make sure that it's on the top wrap turn off, turn off repeat and we can play around with the taper just to get it right but we're going to use zero for this because we already have a taper and we're going to merge those objects because we have no need for them to be separate objects at this moment and what we're going to be doing is we're going to then select the horizontal structural elements and we're going to do the same for this these horizontal sections by copying it down you know using the move tool or holding control and then actually bringing it back up to where it was and then we're going to select these lines together with the cylinder that we drew just now and hit follow path and because it remembers the last settings that we were using we shouldn't have to change anything as you can see we've missed out one horizontal structural element at the bottom but don't worry we just do the same thing copy it and actually having the edge selected while having the cylinder selected we go to follow path again and right now we're just going to select all these meshes that we've just created for the structure and we're going to merge them together and now we're going to do the same for the other side 
Again, because I haven't positioned it to the right position, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to start with the Move tool. And for this section, we're going to be a little bit more precise. We're going to be moving the edges and the vertex so we can have them align in a much more accurate way. Again, for, for such an exercise, I would recommend just making sure that you swap between different views. Adjust it once, you know, rotate your view a little, just so you can make sure that you are pushing it in the right direction because it can be a little bit deceiving when you're only working in one view, in one orientation. You just want to be sure about that. As you can see, now I'm moving the vertex a lot more accurate and remember when you want to select the next one make sure you click outside of your selection outside of your object to deselect your vertex otherwise you'll be moving quite a few points that you probably don't want to at the same time so a few more adjustments to the vertices on top and we should have it there you go so when you rotate it to a different view you you would realize that actually it's there, there are a few more adjustments to be made. And one last vertex to be moved, and maybe just a few more adjustments. Getting there. There you go. This is what I mean by you can actually make a lot of adjustments midway through your modeling. You don't have to be too precious about it. You can always go back by undoing it. And similarly, similar to what we did on the other side, we're going to be adding details by drawing extra edges. This, as you know by now, are the diagonal structure, the exoskeleton of the turning torso. Structurally, gives stability to a twisting building like the turning torso visually architecturally it just looks really pretty it creates a different set of dynamic property to the tower and similarly i'm going to use the move tool while holding control move it down so you make a copy and then you use the follow path tool with the cylinder that we've been using selected, you wrap it. And now we're gonna do the same. We're gonna merge them together so that you don't have that many elements in your objects bar. And with that mesh selected, we're gonna be using edge. We're gonna be selecting edges now. And we're going to be picking the horizontal lines. This time we're not going to be forgetting the bottom bar. And we're going to be using move again. Move it downwards and then we're going to key in 83 just to bring it back up again. Again, follow path, wrap. By now you should be really familiar with follow path tool. Now let's hide this and see how it looks. That's, that's looking really nice. And one thing that's missing is actually the spine on the edges. And that we are also going to use follow path. By selecting all these edges, we get, we're going to do the exact same thing again. Hold control while using the move tool, bring it down, and then bring it back up again by keying in the exact number that it was at. And for this, we're going to create a cylinder and the reason why I'm creating a separate cylinder and not using the uh, one that we were using before is because I don't want the taper because I want it to be the exact same width throughout and similarly we can use wrap again and that should bring the structure to that sharp edge of the building and there you have it we actually have our turning torso model now let's do just do a little bit of organization. Let's make sure that we group the things in the right way, simplify the workspace. 
and I've turned on perspective. I've started to put some materials into it, just to make it look more like the turning torso where it has, where it's predominantly white in colour, white panels, and we've also kept the transparency for the windows. We're going to have a slight dark grey for the structure. We can turn off the visibility of the reference image for now because we don't need that anymore. Okay, right now we're going to group everything together. And for this next stage, the exciting part, we're going to be playing with the deformer tools. We're going to create copies of this building. We're going to try and create a little bit of a plot of skyscrapers, as you'll see. The deformer tool is really useful if you want to create a variety of buildings on the same plot. You know, we've spent the time to create really nice buildings, now we can start to adjust them. Taper tool. So, as I've mentioned before, if the taper gizmo is at the bottom, it adjusts the top. So I made the, the top really tiny and the bottom really big. Somewhat looks like a bit of a merge between the to turning torso and the shard in London. And we're going to try to use bend on this. If the origin is on the top, you can get that through advanced settings. It actually bends the bottom of it. And if it's in the middle, it bends the top and the bottom. That looks interesting. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a few more copies so that we can test the other deformer tools. It's starting to look quite funky. For this one, we are going to try skew. Skew just bends it across. It's a little bit, you can start to create your own leaning tower of Pisa. And similarly, if you have it on the top, it actually, if the origin is on the top, it skews the bottom. So it kicks it out. You can even kick it to the other side, front, back, left, right. And the next tool we're going to be using is the flatten tool. We're going to create another copy of that so we can have fun with it. The flatten tool, I find it's really, really cool as well. It just immediately flattens that edge. And it just does it so easily. So as you can see, it creates so many more facets. It starts to look a little bit diamond-like. Let's try another one, inflate. This one, as you see, self-cat actually encourages you to increase the resolution but for this i'm not going to do that because the file this model itself is really heavy but if you have a much simpler object it inflates it much easily it actually inflates every face every object it creates a really fat building it, it almost adds weight to every mesh as you can see it, it just plumps it up a lot more it looks very funky it looks like there's a growth on the building itself and there you have it. You've got a crazy landscape of buildings. I really hope that this tutorial has given you an idea of the deformer tools in SelfCAD and how, and how fun it is to actually, once you've modeled a very beautiful tower with us, with, with really nice details to it, you can actually start to deform it in such amazing ways and you can actually start to create a landscape of buildings. So it's useful, for example, when you're trying to create an urban grid, a master plan. This is really, really useful. And, and it's just really fun and easy to use. As you can see, I've done a, a variety of buildings in just a short amount of time. So what are you waiting for? Just give this a go and create this city of yours. I hope this has been useful and if you like these videos, please comment and like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see next and I will cover it in the next tutorial. Thank you so much and I hope to see you soon.